So again, the market is concerned that inflation is not whipped, that the Fed may have been overly precipitous in how it cut, cut rates. And then the other thing is they just do not like the long-term fiscal picture of the U.S. One other chart we should bring up is interest on the national debt. What you can see here is that it has gone absolutely parabolic in the last couple of years. Our interest on the debt is something about like 1.3, 1.4 trillion 1. a year. 1.35 trillion run rate. Yep. Yeah. $3,500 per American. And it's something like 20 to 25% of federal revenue now is going to debt service. And this continues to increase. Now, I think there was a, an expectation that we'd be able to get this line to go back down once we had rate cuts, right? Because if inflation's licked and the Fed can lower interest rates again and we can get back to a 2% 10 year bond, which is where we were a few years ago, then all of a sudden that national debt service becomes a little bit more reasonable, right? I mean, you can, you could service that debt at half the cost, but now it looks like that may not happen. So just to, to wrap this up, I just think that the market doesn't like these fundamentals of the U.S. fiscal picture. You've got rapidly increasing debt service costs. You've got an inflation picture that is murky and may not be going away. And the bond markets are starting to price in higher interest rates for longer. And this is why Paul Tudor Jones is saying all roads lead to inflation. And this is why Druckenmiller is shorting U.S. treasuries. So just to give you guys a sense, total U.S. household, corporate, and government debt, which includes state and local and federal. So household debt in the U.S. is about $18 trillion. Corporate debt's about $11 trillion. State and local government debt's $3 trillion. Obviously, the federal debt, $36 trillion. That adds up to a whopping $68 trillion of total debt across um, the U.S., which if you assume a 6% average interest rate, you know, you got corporate debt and household debt, so it's a little more risky, so it carries a higher rate. That means we're spending about $4 trillion a year of an economy that's only $29 trillion a year to service the debt, just to pay the interest on the debt. So 15% of every dollar that trades hands is going towards interest payments on existing leverage, on existing debt. It's a highly levered system. And if you look around the world, this problem is not just a US challenge. Global leverage is a problem that's now becoming a crisis for uh, countries everywhere. So um, this is becoming kind of a global leverage problem, which might explain the flight to safety in assets like gold and Bitcoin, and um, is going to present a lot of real struggles for every global economy. Now, the question is, does the US dollar maintain its reserve status? Because ultimately, I think it is inevitable that the Federal Reserve in the United States is going to need to buy the debt. They're going to need to monetize the debt, which means printing money. There is no one else to buy the debt. So pull up the China chart, Nick. China's historically been the biggest buyer and owner of US treasuries. But here's what's happened in the last couple of years. It peaked at about $1.3 trillion about 10 years ago. And then recently, particularly starting around COVID, they began selling down and have been selling down at an accelerated pace. Today, China is back to the level they were at nearly 15 years ago in terms of their treasury holdings. And they have publicly declared that they are selling off US treasuries and buying gold instead. So the biggest buyer of US treasuries has kind of left the market or is leaving the market. Who does that leave? Well, at the end of the day, the Federal Reserve has been the kind of buyer of last resort. And if they end up buying treasuries, that's where we have a problem with too many dollars and inflation kicking up. And so it feels like a lot of the trades in assets are what's going to benefit from the inflation. And it's going to be gold, it's going to be Bitcoin,